Hello, my name is Polly Price. I'm professor of law at Emory Law School in Atlanta, Georgia. Welcome to the course, Citizenship and U.S. Immigration. Over the course of the next several weeks, we will explore many important themes and topics of citizenship and immigration in United States law. We begin with the concept of citizen. Citizenship is the most basic distinction among persons currently living in the United States and those who wish to enter. Topics covered this week include how one becomes a U.S. citizen, how citizenship at birth is determined in this and in other countries, the concept of dual citizenship and is it permitted in the United States, what rights come with citizenship, what are the reasons for becoming a U.S. citizen if a non-citizen has the right to live here permanently anyway. To begin this lecture, I wanted to start with some terminology that it will help us to be familiar with. The first one is probably the most readily understood, citizen. It's important to remember, though, that this is a legal term and carries with it legal rights and responsibilities. We're going to be exploring what those legal rights and responsibilities are throughout the course. The term you may be less familiar with is the word alien. Alien signifies simply someone who is not a citizen. It's an odd term, but a very old one used in international law, used in early American statutes, and is still included as a term in United States legal documents today. So you will see this referred to both in the materials that are provided in this course as well as in the press. Naturalization. This is the term that refers to the process of becoming a citizen for someone who has been born somewhere else. In other words, a citizen of another country who wishes to become a citizen of the United States must naturalize. Most of today's lecture will be about this naturalization process. Another term, or an abbreviation rather, INA, refers to the Immigration and Nationality Act. This is the federal statute that governs citizenship and immigration in the United States. INA is used as a short-term reference for Immigration and Nationality Act, and you'll see it referred to both in my materials and elsewhere. So uh, it's a convenient abbreviation to use, and you will often see INA section followed by some numbers, and that's simply a reference to the place in the United States Code where the particular provision is found. And finally, a term that we want to understand for the purpose of this lecture, lawful permanent resident. And again, it is often abbreviated, LPR, lawful permanent resident. You sometimes hear it legal permanent resident. This is someone who has the right to stay in the United States indefinitely, as well as to come and go uh, and live in the United States. This is the green card, the equivalent of having a green card. You hear about the green card, it's not actually green. It used to be green, and that's why the uh, particular name has stuck. But it's a visa, it's a particular kind of visa that gives you uh, lawful permanent residence, and it is often referred to as a green card. So I use it interchangeably, other people use it interchangeably, and I wanted to point that out at the outset. We discuss the term naturalization as one path to becoming a citizen of the United States. There are actually three ways that U.S. citizenship may be acquired. The first is birth in the United States. That's a topic that we will explore in more depth in coming lectures. The second is birth abroad if at least one parent is a United States citizen. And the third, which is, of course, the topic for this lecture, is naturalization. So let's assume that you are an LPR. You're a lawful permanent resident. You are a green card holder. And you want to become a citizen. What are the requirements for doing so? I want to walk through these quickly because they teach us a lot about uh, our ideals and ambitions for those who are joining us as citizens. But first, I think it's useful to think about and to look at some data about who these people are. Who is it? Who are they who have joined us 
as citizens in recent years. This is a chart from the American Immigration Center, and it shows persons naturalized by region of the world from the years 2009 to 2011. So, for example, you can see that persons who have naturalized predominantly come from Asia. The next highest number here in terms of uh, number of immigrants who have naturalized to become U.S. citizens. The next highest other North America, that of course refers to Canada and Mexico, followed by the Caribbean, Europe, Africa, South America, Central America, and so on. Another way to think about who are our newest citizens is to look at data represented by this chart, the top 10 source countries for persons who naturalized in the year 2009. And so from bottom to top, you can see in terms of the absolute numbers of persons naturalized, the largest number is from Mexico at 111,000, followed by India, 52,000, Philippines, nearly 39,000, People's Republic of China, 38,000, and so on. Again, these are the top source countries, and in absolute numbers, uh, they represent, again, one fiscal year, that the number of citizens joining us from those countries in one year. Another interesting statistic or piece of data that is useful for us to think about is the following study from the Pew Hispanic Center. This chart shows the percent of naturalizations that took place among legal permanent residents or lawful permanent residents between the years 1970 and 2005. So what this data represents is of all the persons who are eligible to naturalize, that is, of all the green card holders, of all the legal permanent residents in a particular year who would be eligible to naturalize, to become a U.S. citizen, how many did so versus how many chose to remain in lawful permanent resident or non-citizen status. Looking at 1970, you see that was the high water mark, at least for the study, in which 64% of persons who had been admitted with green cards went on to become citizens of the United States. That number steadily declined through the early 90s, uh, but then began to climb at the end of the 20th century and in the first decade of the year 2000 to its current spot, which is around 52 to 53 percent. It is a, a number that means slightly more than half of those who are eligible to become citizens do so. We'll talk about later in another lecture what are the incentives and what are the rights for becoming a citizen. And why should one become a citizen if you have the right to stay here permanently? We'll explore some of these questions as we go. Going on quickly to another source of information, and this is related to the slide that we just looked at. We are interested in the percentage of persons who go on to become citizens who are eligible to do so. This chart, again from the Pew Hispanic Center, shows the percentage of Mexican-born green card holders who go on to become U.S. citizens compared to all immigrants. And what you see here is that the numbers are, are somewhat lower, so that, uh, for example, in the year 2005, 35% of Mexican-born uh, lawful permanent residents chose to become naturalized citizens or managed to become naturalized citizens versus 59% of all immigrants. So it's an interesting statistic and one that many persons are uh, concerned about. And then finally, in terms of data, I wanted to show you what is probably one of the most controversial areas of immigration today in the United States, and that is this slide depicting the legal status of the foreign-born population. This is a snapshot of the foreign-born population in 1995 and again in 2005, and I'll explain from left to right what these terms mean and signify. On the left, you'll see naturalized citizens, 
Uh, those are the persons who became U.S. citizens later in life. They started life as a citizen of another country. They came to the United States and naturalized here and are U.S. citizens. So of all the foreign-born persons living in the United States in 1995, nearly a third of them were naturalized citizens. That number goes up slightly for 2005, as you can see in this chart. The bulk of the foreign-born population is uh, remain legal permanent resident aliens, the category that we've been discussing. You'll see that in 1995, 47% of all foreign-born persons living in the United States fell into this category. That number was smaller in 2005 as the number of uh, persons who naturalized as citizens went up. Now when you see legal and temporary, the third category, this is referring to uh, as student visas, other temporary short-term visits to the United States, and you can see that that's a very small percentage of the overall foreign-born population. In terms of the controversy, modern controversies about immigration security, immigration reform, it's the last column that we are most interested in. Now, these are estimates only because we don't really know how many unauthorized migrants are living in the United States. But the Pew Hispanic Center has estimated that in 1995, 20% of the foreign-born population in the United States, that would be one in five of every person who was not born in the United States, was an unauthorized migrant. In 2005, that number was up to 31%. That's nearly one in three. Currently, the estimate is that there are just under 11 million unauthorized aliens living in the United States. Of this undocumented population, as we will discuss further, most of those are persons who have overstayed a visa rather than persons who have cross the border surreptitiously. So for example, overstaying student visas, tourist visas, and, and so forth can make up a large part of that population. But again, these are uh, estimates only. The preceding program is copyrighted by Emory University.